All right, welcome. In this video, we're going to be working Algebra 2 homework 12.2, which is about solving systems using technology. And so we're going to need one of these. And if you don't have one of these, that's OK. I would just recommend going to Google and typing RREF calculator and just using the first result. Um, and it'll do the same thing for you. But on this video, because this is what you're going to have to use on the quiz and the test, I'm going to I'm going to use this. Maybe I'll spice it up with the TI-83 every once in a while in case you're using one of those. Um, it's really no different. All right, so let's get to it. Number one, we're going to start by typing in. Okay, also I'm going to recommend if you already have if you've been recently like reducing matrices like I have, that you're going to just clear the calculator second plus seven one two each time. Okay, you can just overwrite the matrix, but I'm just going to replace it every time. So I go into the matrix menu. I'm going to edit a. And wait, A is going to need to be a 3 by 4, because there's three variables, uh, four columns. So 1x plus 1y plus 1z equals 2. 0x's plus 1y minus 3z's equals 1. And 2x's plus 1y plus 5z equals 0. Okay, so I've got A ready to go. Now I go out to the main menu, I go to the matrix math menu, because I'm going to ask it to do some math, and I want RREF. Okay, I'm going to call for RREF on matrix A, and I get that from names. I'm just going to choose A, and I'll have it reduce. Okay, and so I'm going to say, oh, all right, I can see this bottom row is 0, 0, 0, 1. That means no solution, right? 0 equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to need a sheet of paper, um, and well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably each time write the reduced matrix down and what my, you know, my conclusion is from that. And you know, this first one, maybe you've just watched for the first two minutes here and you, um, you've just been watching and haven't been working this on your own calculator. That's not gonna help, okay? That's gonna leave you really in a bad position on the quiz or the test. You have to do these yourself. You have to do the calculator steps yourself. If you're just watching and copying down the answers, well, I already told you what's gonna happen. Not gonna go well for you. All right, so number one reduces to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 4, negative 3, 0 with 0, 0, 1. Okay, I see that 0 equals 1, so I conclude no solution. Okay, number two, bring back the sheet, get the calculator. All right, I'm going to clear the RAM, second plus 7, 1, 2. Okay, and now I'm going to go in, and maybe this time, since I've got the nice TI-84, I'm going to go into the matrix math menu, ask for reduced row echelon form kind of preemptively, and then ask for a matrix from F3. Okay, it defaults to 2x2, two two, but we need 3x4. Okay, so we're going to just type in our numbers that way. 1, 1, 1, 2, 6x, negative 4y, 5z equaling 31. 5x, 2y, and 2z equaling 13. We row reduce it and we get this. Okay, so, yeah. I've got 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That means we've got a unique solution. So 1x equals 3, y equals negative 2, and z equals 1. So my solution is uh, 3, negative 2, 1. Or you could write it as like I ordered triple, All right, whatever you want. All right. For three, uh, maybe I'll switch it up and work with a TI 83 for this one. So, second plus seven, one, two, clear the RAM. That was suggested to me by the stat teacher. Um, and I think that's actually good advice. So, we're going to edit our matrices in the TI 83. We have to do this. We have, like, we can't just do RREF and use F3. I don't think F3 even does anything on this calculator. So, I've got 2x, 1y, negative 3z equaling 0, 4x, 2y, negative 6z equaling 0. And then 1x negative 1y plus 1z equaling 0. And we've got that. So we're going to quit to ask for matrix math. Have it do RREF on matrix A. And then OK. So all right. I'm thinking, all right, I see the row of all zeros. And you know, if you're on TI-83, this is a good one because it had a bunch of decimals. Okay, if you want to just have like, um, what am I saying here? 
If we want to have fractions, let's see if this works on the 83. Yes, it does. Okay, so that's what I'm going to copy down. Just do math frac, and then this is going to be much easier for us to look at. Okay, and then I'll go over here. Yeah, you can still see that. And I'll say, all right, number three reduces to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 2 thirds, negative 5 thirds, 0, and 0, 0, 0. From here, I know I've got infinitely many solutions. But if you just say infinitely many solutions, I'm only going to give you half the credit, right? Because we have to find all solutions is what the prompt is going to be. So we kind of interpret each row. 1x minus 2 thirds of z equals 0. And y plus 5 thirds of z equals 0. Okay, we're going to solve those equations for x and y. Let z be our independent variable. So x is going to equal 2 thirds of z. Y is going to equal negative 5 thirds of z. And z can be whatever it wants. And you can display your answer like that if you like. Or you can write it as, you know, kind of like I did up above, okay, where x is 2 thirds of z. But, you know, when we write it like this and there's one independent variable, we're usually going to call it t. I think for reasons that would become more obvious if you took like a linear algebra class. But um, so we're just going to, that, that's an equivalent form of this answer. Okay, it's like x, y, z, x, y, z. All right. That's infinitely many solutions. And so I think you should probably expect that, you know, we've got three rows of three. I think I tried to make sure I had three of each type. Three unique solutions, three no solutions, and three infinitely many solutions. Okay, so for number four, we'll set up for that one over here. Clear the RAM, second plus seven, one, two. Okay, and then we're going to matrix edit. Get a three by four. I get one, wait, no, one, negative two, three, nine, negative one, three, negative one, negative six, two, negative five, positive five, positive 17. Okay. One trick you can use to make sure you type it in right is just like kind of check all the negatives. So I'm saying kind of in a diamond here, and I'm saying same situation here, and then one over there. Um, Got to make sure we have our numbers entered right, otherwise, we don't have a chance to get the problem right. Say we're going to do REF on matrix A, and there we've got ourselves a unique solution. Okay, one, negative one, two. So I'm going to say, all right, it reduced to this, which we know is a unique solution, one, negative one, and two. So my solution, I might write these as an ordered triple. Okay, it could say one, negative one, and two. You can say x equals 1, y equals negative 1, and z equals 2. Also, I really I don't care as long as you're you know, properly displaying all the solutions. All right, number 5. Ah, you see, uh, there's a lot of snipping of these problems from various places on the internet. Um, I'm going to, maybe this time I'll do the kind of the fast way, calling for a th reduced row echelon form of a 3 by 4, which is going to be 1, 1, 1, 7. 3, negative 2, negative 1, 4, 1, 6, wait, no, 6, 5, 24. Okay. All right. This is, make sure I typed this in, right? 7, 4, 24, 1, negative 1, 5, 1, negative 2, 6, 1, 3, 1. Okay, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to do math frac. And then here I've got these things, but I know it's going to be infinitely many solutions down there. And so now our work is to, you know, properly display our infinitely many solutions. So I'm going to bring that in so that we can see it. I kind of almost am regretting doing fraction because you know, it was pretty nice decimals, but you know we've gone this far. And I'm going to say, all right, 1x plus 1 fifth of z. That equals 18 over 5. 
and then 1y plus 4 fifths of z is going to equal 17 over 5. And then we're going to solve for x and y in terms of z. I think we've seen enough of that matrix. x equals 18 fifths minus 1 fifth of z. y is going to equal 17 fifths minus four-fifths of z, and z can be whatever it wants. And then you know, if I wanted to write this as like a vector solution, I'd have x equaling, you know, maybe I call that 18 minus 1z, or 1t, all divided by 5, and this would be 17 minus 4t divided by 5 and t. Okay, but that's, yeah, this is fine. Or you could, you know, instead of all these, you could just have the decimal numbers, and that would be cool with me too. All right, number six. Let's see, there we are. Calculator in here. And, you know, so I've got one unique, one infinitely many solutions on this row. I'm kind of expecting a no solution. So I'm bringing the second plus seven, one, two, clear the RAM. Go into matrix, edit the matrix, get a three by four, and now I'm going to type in one, 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 four. Oh, whoops. Right, then two, three, four, ten, three, four, five, twelve. Okay, then we're getting, now we've got the matrix entered. We quit, we ask for matrix math on matrix A, and then, uh, yeah, there we go, no solution. Row of all zeros and then one, that's like saying zero equals one, and we know that's no solution. So I'm going to go over here and say one, zero, negative one, zero. This is the row of all zeros and a one, which is causing me to know This system has no solution. And then the middle row was 0, 1, 2, 0. So we know no solution. We see that all zeros in a one row. All right. Then all right, let's look at number 7. Right, number 7 is right there. feeling this one's going to be infinitely many solutions for some reason. So I'm going to clear the RAM. I'm going to edit the matrix, edit A, it's going to be a 3 by 4. I get 2, negative 1, positive 2, positive 6. Negative 1x plus 1y plus 1z equals 0. Then negative 1x, there's no y here, so I need to put in a 0. Z is negative 3, or negative 3 Z's equals negative 6. And then we're going to ask for reduced row echelon form on matrix A. And, oh yes, we see our row of all zeros. That means we're going to have infinitely many. All right, so I'm just going to copy down the matrix I got. This might be the same example that I used in class, maybe? I don't know. I've done a lot of these recently, so it's, it's tough to remember. So I'm going to say, all right, I've got infinitely many solutions. I'm going to say 1x plus 3z equals 6, meaning that x equals 6 minus 3z. And then y plus 4z also equals 6, so y is going to equal 6 minus 4z. Okay, and then, you know, z can be whatever it wants. And oh, that's the nice thing about, okay, I think I said in class that it's, yeah, it's always going to be z as the independent variable. And that's because we're using technology in the way it row reduce, uh, pardon me, the way it just reduces these matrices. Um, it's always going to, you know, make sure that these leading ones here 
which are called pivots, you know, later on. Uh, they correspond to x and y, so those will always be our dependent variables um, just because of the way it, it reduces the matrix. Okay, if we wanted to write this as a vector formula for a line in space, that would be 6 minus 3t, 6 minus 4t, and t. Okay, but again, either of these would be acceptable solutions for me in my class. So that was number 7. Let's go to number 8. Maybe this one I will just ask for RREF on A. Whoops, that's Y variables. That's good stuff, maybe for a different class, but uh, or maybe for when we were storing regression equations last time. But 1x negative 3y positive 1z equals 4. Negative 1x positive 2y negative 5z equals 3. 5x negative 13y positive 13z equals 8. And I'm going to ask for it to row reduce, and I got no solution. Okay, so let's start at the top of this paper. Let's say for 8, we're getting 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 13, 4, 0 with 0, 0, 1. Okay, that means no solution. Okay. Number 9, the last of these. You know, and if you need more practice with these, just let me know. I can go dig up more 3x3 three three system practice and you can just use your calculator. But I have a feeling that after 9, we should probably be good. And let's see, we had an infinitely many solutions and no solution, so I feel like this one should come back with one unique solution. But I'm going to use the TID3. I'm going to clear the RAM by pressing second plus seven, one, two. Okay, matrix edit A. A is going to be a three by four. Two, one, negative two, negative one. Three, negative three, negative one, five. One, negative two, positive three, and positive six. I've got my matrix, quit out. Ask it to reduce the matrix A. And there we got it, yeah. One unique solution, one, negative one, one. So I'm getting one zero 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 one zero 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 one. That means one unique solution at one negative one one. All right. So I, you know, maybe I'll display my answer a little differently here. Okay. Well, that would be good. All right. That was number nine. Number ten. We're going to write an augmented matrix that could be reduced to solve the system. Okay, so I kind of copy in the coefficient matrix 1, 1, 2. And y's, I have no y here, so that'll be a 0, negative 1, and 3. And then 1, negative 1, 3. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, 1, negative 1, 0. Okay, there was no z in the third equation. 1, negative 1, 0. And one zero four. Hey, okay, that's an augmented matrix that could be reduced to solve the system. They didn't ask us to solve it, and we just did nine of them. So I think that'll be, that'll be good enough. Okay. Then over here, number eleven couldn't let you, you know, just get away completely scot free without solving anything by hand, right? And we need to maintain those skills too. So we're gonna go from the augmented matrix to the system, and then we're gonna solve it by hand. But now this is going to be a two by two system, so I, I think it'll be something we can solve. All right, so this would be two x plus three y equals one, and then the second row will give us a second equation. That's five x plus six y equals five, and then I'm going to what I'm going to do here. Um, Oh, I'm going to solve the system by hand using substitution or elimination. And you know, if you're a big substitutor, you go ahead and substitute. I just don't think this is going to work out terribly well for substitution. I see that three and the six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative two. So I'd have negative four x 
negative 6y equaling negative 2, and then 5x positive 6y equaling 5. And when I add these two together, I get 5x minus 4x is 1x, no y's equaling 5 minus 2, which is 3. And then I go back to the original equation, the easier looking of the two, doesn't, doesn't really matter. And I'll use 2x plus 3y equals 1. So 2x plus 3y equals 1. So that's 6 plus 3y equals 1. And so 3y equals 5. And y is equal to 5 thirds. And you know, because I got not a whole number, it might be best that I go in and verify that, um, that x equals 3 and y equals 5 thirds fits the second equation. Check. Since this homework, you know, I'm only 20 minutes and this homework didn't take too long, uh, I think it wouldn't be too big of a deal for me to check. So 5x would be 5 times 3 plus 6 times 5 thirds. Oh, okay, I, I made an error, but I don't think it's because of the, I don't think it's because of the, um, the fraction. It's a sign error. 3y equals negative 5. Y is negative 5 thirds. So this would need to be negative because it's like, how am I going to add two positive numbers together that start with 15 and have that come back to 5? That doesn't seem likely. So, but what we're doing here is 15 plus, you know, we could look at this as 6 over 1 and we could say, all right, well, negative 30 divided by 3 is negative 10 equals 5. That's true. Okay, so I feel good about that. And so my solution is going to be x equals 3 and y equals negative 5. Thirds. All right, and that's going to be all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope it helped.